Chronicles of Football podcast. You know how it goes. How about the guests? <laughs> the guests we've got this week. Ah. Ah. Chronicles of Football, we are live inside. Always ready to ride. Do you know Here's what I'm saying? Caesar. Yeah? Hear him. Always. So Never have, hiding. So I have to give him the mic first. You know? <laughs> Trust me. This is why, you know. I go by the day of J and I, your host, with the most, as we do. Yeah? We're in this uh, pandemic. So obviously we've got to keep our social distancing. Yeah, I definitely have to keep our social distancing from him, you see. So my <laughs> folks are yeah, me, we do it, so it's a meter now, isn't it? So a meter away from me. Yeah, it's a meter, mate. mate. We've meter. got the father. Yeah, man. The big father from the south side. I just have to accept it, huh? people. You know what I mean? Way there, I just the have big to father, it. given the ardour. I just have to accept As he it. does. You know how it goes. Big up yourself, please. Announce yourself. Well, Let them know me. who you are. Well, it's me, you know who it is now. Mm. It's Dia. Come on. You're not good. Yeah? Well, they're all, all right. good. We're all good. Yeah, so I have to ask them. I have to ask I know them you're good. Boy, I'm here. I know you're good. <laughs> I'm here. You're, you're nice. I'm here. You're I'm nice. Here. You're nice. I'm here. I'm here. I'm positive. I know you're, I know you're positive because you're, you're, feeling, you're feeling excited right now. And yeah, I know yeah. why you're feeling am, it because I'm excited. Mm. And we had that lovely conversation. I am. I so am, big I up am. the young boy. I am. Big AG. him up still. Big yeah? him up Big up the young boy getting the call up. Big him up. Yeah? The big camp. Three lions and that. Big him up. We're not going to say too much. Yeah, that's We'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. But big him up still. Big up the young boy. You know what I'm saying? Big up the young boy. Yeah. But we have someone in the hot seat. The hot seat's warm. Yeah. It's cold outside, but the hot seat's warm. Trust me. Huh? We've got some, we got we got a, a special one today. It's always a special one, but it's a special one today. Yeah, because this one's different, you know? Like, yeah. usually we got outfield players and all them thing there. And but this one, we got someone who's... This one. <laughs> The, 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 the sticks controller. You understand? <laughs> in between the sticks. You Let you man know what you're doing Come at that on, back yeah. four. Barking out yeah. instructions. Telling you. Come on. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, without, without further ado, we've got Mr. Fergal Hell Brown. Welcome, sir. Yeah, no, thank you, boys. Thank you for having me. It's really, yeah. really good to be here. How you doing? How you doing? You good? Yeah, not bad. I'm good. good. Lovely, yeah. Getting good through week. these times. Yeah, man. Busy, but... Always, isn't it? Family good? Yeah, everyone's good. So you say you're getting through these times. We're all getting through these treacherous treacherous times. Day by day, bro. Day by day. Do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. Just big up everyone. If you're out there, striving, surviving, keep your head up, man. Just listen to our podcast. You'll be good. (laughs) Believe. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, Fergal, whenever we start this podcast, we start with one question. We end with one question. First question we start off with is, why football? I think I yeah I don't don't think I had a choice really oh, yeah, um, that. with 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 my life. Um, I, I my granddad was a professional footballer. He was an Irish man. He was a professional footballer. My dad loved football. Never played football, but just loved football. And I just came from a footballing family. Like every side of my family, mum's side, dad's side, everyone just mm. loved football. So, you know, I played football since I was since I could walk, since I can remember. I know that's cliche, but mm. <laughs> I, I am one of those boys. You know, born in London, you you can't really get away from it either. So yeah, yeah it's just. Football, 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 nothing. You know what I mean? I it was, that. it was, yeah. My life had to be around football, and and that's that's how it's become. So, how did your, how did your brain connect with the ball? At what age? What what time did the what time did the mechanism start start forming or start taking off? I should say. I think yeah. I started I started academy football when I was six years old. I played for West Ham when I was under sevens. I think. Oh, you straight went straight. I went straight into. Oh, yeah. right. so what, as an outfield player. Or in goal, player? no, I was playing in goal. So I did like. Sunday League, but I never played, really played matches with my Sunday League club. Mm. And then I know the boy who's at Watford now called Mason Barrett, yeah. who was at West Ham with okay. me. And we were we played for the same Sunday League team. And I literally was just, yeah, he was playing for West Ham. And his dad called Ted West Ham. I know his goalkeeper. And I went straight there when I was, yeah, like six, seven. I can't remember the, how old I was back then. Mm. Um, but yeah, so, yeah, just straight into academy football. Just loved it, really. Loved, loved being in goal. Loved diving around. Loved being at the mental kid saving the ball. Yeah. But yeah, that that was it. I was at Academy Football and I just loved it so much and I thought I don't want to go anywhere else. This is this is what I want to do. Like that. Like yeah, from that that young. I can't remember, yeah, nothing. So being at West Ham 
from six seven? How did that? How did that journey like? How did that begin? Yeah, the progression from yeah. there. Well, yeah. So I I joined when I was so yeah young like well, really young. You, like signed straight or was it? Did you go for a process of? Training, like training. Yeah. Oh, I, I think I, they were desperate for a goalkeeper. As I said, I knew Mason. I knew his dad well from Sunday League, and I went for one trial, maybe one training session, and I was signed. Yeah, within a week. It, it, it's very, very vivid in my mind. I was young. I can't really remember it that well, but um, no, yeah, I was going there twice, three times a week. It's not too far from my house. Fifteen, twenty minutes. Dad was taking me there, um, and yeah, I was enjoying it. And then I was there for about a year and a half, maybe. And then they turned around to me one day and they just said, look, we're trialing new goalkeepers. Come back in six months, I think they said to me. And then... You were eight. That's yeah, was eight or nine, yeah. something young. And my dad just turned around. To, I didn't have a say. My dad just turned around to me and said, on the pitch, because straight after the game, my dad said to him, he's too young for this. Like, yeah. Don't expect him ever to come back. Here. Oh, wow. And, and that was that. Uh, uh, and that then, was a bit straight. Yeah. 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 It was that and that. And then... What, they told you this... During Straight after the game, the game after, yeah. Oh, wow. I was, we had played a game. I think it was against, if I remember correctly, I think it was against Redbridge. Yeah. So the, the, no, like a, okay, one of them ones. Yeah. Ones. So we were playing them and I was ill that day. I, I think I made a few mistakes. I think my dad's told me that. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, and they just come out and said, we're trying a few keepers. And I was like, don't, like, this is too young for the pressures at this age yeah. for you to be say, come back in six months, like yeah. leaving him on that kind of cliff edge. So yeah. we just said, look, nah, I'm not taking him back. And then I went into Sunday League Um all the spec athletic, um, I once had flats um, down those sides. And <laughs> once had flats, you know. Yeah, just went, <laughs> went back to, yeah, back to foundations, really. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, just yeah. kind of, yeah, yeah of course, as it enjoy it. Yeah, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Of course, no I, pressure. Yeah, exactly. Love yeah. I think that's what your dad wanted. Yeah, just to get the love like, of it back. Just play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just go um, and play. Yeah, I think that was probably the best thing you could, yeah, what could have done in that situation was just go, nah, let, let's just go play. Yeah. Like this, if you're that good, the opportunity will rise again. And, that's what happened. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, no, I'm very thankful we made that decision on my behalf because yeah. I wouldn't, don't think I'd be, gone on to do what I did yeah. in my life if I didn't have that made that decision. As young as I was, yeah, yeah. I think it was a very big decision to make and uh, the right decision to make at that age. That's good, bro. So then, then, then after, that, ages, yeah. after that and the Sunday, then where was the next step from Sunday football? Did, was there a next step? How? So, so yeah, so I was playing, yeah, so, so for Aldersbrook Athletic, which is a run by a guy called Peter Hucker. I don't know if you guys know him. I think he won the FA Cup with QPR as a goalkeeper. Peter oh, okay. Yeah, he, yeah, he was a person. Anyway, he had ran this Aldersbrook Athletic and I used to play half in goal, half outfield. Do you know what I mean? That's what Just, they use these two compromise for, yeah. the, for the young so, ones at that, them Sunday, at Sunday League. Yeah, that's what happened yeah. to my son. I've done yeah. that many times. <laughs> happened so, to yeah, my so son. I've done that many times. They had the rotation every yeah. week. I'd come out and then someone would go in goal for that week. But yeah, no, I, I enjoyed it. And then I had a goalkeeping coach there called Martin Edwards who was big in the game. He was working for QPR at the time as well at Sunday League. So he yeah. took me over to QPR. I can't remember if it was nine or ten, um, however old it was. And I was there for a few months, maybe six months max. And me and my dad were getting trained there from east to west. You know, yeah, it was a long journey yeah, and he were, yeah. he'd, he'd done business to run. And yeah. we'd get in there and I'd have to meet him at his office. And we'd get there from there, from Shoreditch, over to, to west to, keep, to, to wherever they were training. And then they moved further away to Heathrow. Mm. And so my dad was like, it's, it's a, a stretch yeah. as it is. I, I don't think I can do it. So, yeah, left QPR at that age, I can't, yeah, 9, 10. And then I went went back to Sunday League for a bit, about six months. And then at under uh, 11, I want to say, um, year six, I can do it by date. Yeah, year six, I signed for I signed for Luton after a trial. Um, so I was a six week trial for Luton. I was a big, really big, chubby kid back then, fat kid. But I signed for Luton, yeah, under 11s. I went from under 11s and under 12 seasons. So I was back there for two years. Luton. Yeah, under 12, maybe under 12, under 11s, under 12s, under 13s, I was at Luton. Yeah. And then I signed for Norwich at the end of my under 13, but they kind of mixed and matched. All right, they pause. kind of cross over. Pause, so yeah. Right, that's, pause. Yeah, you've gone, where did, how did that, how did You're, you're that, going for three, you, you've done three years and then you've got into <laughs> Norwich, like, Norwich. Yeah. Woo, yeah. like, what about um, Luton? The Luton, how did that, because you just said you've gone, so you obviously West Ham's local, mm -hmm. you've gone end to end, we, we east to west. Yeah. But then yeah, now you're going go. even further with the Luton, Luton. and yeah, how yeah. did that even uh, yeah. how, how does it even come even, about? Yeah. yeah, how does it even correlate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the, the, the straight answer is to this is my dad's a Luton fan. Oh, there we go. So oh. it oh, was, you know, hard. I had, Makes sense, I had to go there. So no, um <laughs> yeah. only reason why I said that, because I went uni there. Yeah. And this 
I remember the training grounds back then. They trained in um, just near Eli what do you call it? Yeah, no. And there was another training ground. No, sorry, the uni we played them. Yeah. Let me not say we because I, I was standing on the side. <laughs> <laughs> not we. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, we played them. Um, Bulldog. Uh, no, nah, there's a train. It's like a complex opposite Luton Airport Parkway. There's a complex sure. and there's a train. There's like a football ground. That's where we used to. Uh, fo- it's like a not like a plaza, but you you can you can, they've got a gym there. You can rent out a hall there. I know what you're talking about. It's literally the summer. But it's just ground though. Yeah, but it's just ground at the back. Yeah, oh, okay. and there's a big astral yeah, turf as ground. well. Yeah. But yeah, yeah anyway. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, that's where it, yeah, go on. So it's just ground. But yeah, when you said that, I'm thinking Luton, well, Luton ain't great. Yeah, even no. Now. But anyway. Yeah, no. Um. I th- yeah, one of the reasons was because family, family, dad supported Luton. Yeah, um, and to walk, see me walk out on Kenilworth Road. Yeah, one day would yeah. probably be for his dream. Yeah, um, but no, we um, my yeah, I went for a trial. I was a big fat kid, and they said to me in a trial, and they said I finished it. And Greg was the academy manager at the time, and he said to me, "Look, you're a big boy. Do you know, it's hard for me to to, to sign you. Could you know, you're, you're quite chubby, but they're like, we believe in you." All right. So they believed in me in that trial, and then they signed me. And I remember losing that weight within two months. Mm. Like it was oh, puppy wow. fat. Like oh, I was okay. like oh, year okay. six or whatever. And I would, I was chubby, but I lost it within a month or two because just for that relentless training. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um. But yeah, we trained Tuesday, Thursday, and the game on a Sunday. It was um probably about, you know you're going there at six o'clock in rush hour from right around the M25 and yeah, up, and it was yeah. it turned an hour journey into a, sometimes hour forty five, sometimes stretched into two hours. Yeah journey back and then you've got an hour and you're doing that so three hours round trip twice a week then two hours and you're looking at eight hours mm. around to loot and um, following my football and you know I can only thank my parents for taking me and doing me that journey yeah but um now at the time I was there they were, they were in the conference prem which probably makes it even weirder yes. like I was going doing those eight hour journeys to play for a, a conference for team. a conference prem team like it, it didn't really make sense but that's how much my dad loves no, football yeah, and how much I love the team. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, no. And 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 I, I I loved my time at Luton. Like my best, my favourite ever moment at Luton. I have millions, but a moment that sticks with me when my goalie coach was called Nathan Abbey. And I must have been young, so year six, whatever that is, 11, whatever, 10, 11. Yeah, and 11, yeah. we had a session, a goalie session, just a goalie session. And he was like, oh, that's a session done now. And he was like, he goes, boys, um, I can stay for an extra half an hour if anyone else wants to do an extra half an hour. And he goes in front of everyone, he goes, I know Fergal won't want to. And just implying that I was lazy. And these were the times where I was, you know, not the, the fit is not in the best shape. And yeah. I remember going, oh, like proper, like, and then everyone left and I was picking up my stuff. He tapped me on the shoulder, looked at me, pulled my, put his arm around me and he goes, look, I'm going to say one thing to you. The moment the goal, the moment the coach stops shouting at you is the moment the coach is giving up on you. Mm. And, from that moment onwards, that, that kind of changed my perspective on anyone. If anyone's <laughs> shouting at me, you're like, they're doing it for a reason. Yeah. And it made sense. Now, yeah. I'm, now at my age, I, I coach now and I do it to boys. And you're like, it was right. Yeah. Like, you do only really, really get on to someone because you really, you really, really you care about it. Them. Them. Yeah. You see it. You they can don't, see they the potential. See it, you can see you what's see going it. on. Yeah, you don't yeah, want yeah. it to go to waste. Yeah. 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 And, and, and I mean, that was moment was, you know, big for me. Like, that proper big for me. Like, a moment I'll never forget. And I, I don't really don't really remember much when you're 10, 11, but that was just a moment that stuck with me. Yeah. Um, but no, like, I remember going on my first tour. We went to uh, Switzerland and I was a 10. 11 right my first year my first time away from my family and i remember mm. crying every single night being wow. away from my first time at 10 years old and i would you know and i was down by the, by the toilet pretending i was being sick and i was on the phone to my dad dad, dad i want to come home i want to come home and i remember going down at like three o'clock in the morning to the hotel reception and see all the coaches still up by the bar and i was down there like oh can i go home like, <laughs> <laughs> wow. but no like those i think back in the now and even like there were times where my first ever trial at luton my first ever day we were training on an astro pitch and i turned up in some copers some metal stud copers mm. and i was like dad dad can i can i wear these in this astro pitch and he was like oh yeah we're fine so i've got out of the pitch and i've walked on the pitch and they're like no 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 you can't come on these metal studs so i had to wear i think it was the Souza, the guy at uh, Brentford now, the coach, you know, yes. yeah. So he yeah, was yeah. there at Luton time. He's like, no, you can't wear them. So I had to end up wearing his 
molds when I was, <laughs> as a 10, 11 year old kid. And I was lucky I had big feet. I was so like, you're like you're work. thinking, oh my God, is this the start? Yeah, yeah. The start oh, was great. You did, yeah, you definitely. They, and, they're not going to want me at the end nah, of this. Yeah, one, but like, the, I mean, I, I think back to those moments. I think back to those moments. I think they've made me the character I am. Yeah. They allowed me to, to, to really like grow up quickly. And really, I know this, as small as they, they are, they really do mentally prepare you for what, what comes in life. And even the stuff that you see. Like we went on tour to um, Austria for the Cordial Cup. And we were under 12s, I want to say, or under 11s. And we went away with the under 13s and under 15s. And we were at one. We, were, we had a game the next day. And the under 15s snuck out of the hotel through the back doors. And they went to the pizza restaurant down the thing, down the road. And they walked back with the pizza. And the coach caught them. Hey. So the next day... They made the boys run up to down the car park doing a bleep test, carrying the boxes, the pizza boxes on their head, going up and down. And all of us under <laughs> under eleven, under thirteen, just peering at our, our our room, just looking out the window, going, "What the hell is pissing down with rain?" And I was like, "Oh my god!" And they got the pizza boxes like, on top of their head. Like this, it's boys like James Justin. Okay, you know, the uh, yeah, boys. yeah, Lester, Lester. Now, like that's probably character really for them. Yes. As well as <laughs> yeah. for us to watch them. Yeah. Like, no, but Luton was a really good experience, really good experience. And then I signed when I was under tw uh, 12. But well, where did the interest come from? Mm. And how, how did, did it come? What, yeah, how from Luton? From, no, yeah. no, from no, Norwich. You're from Norwich, how did that, because you, you obviously you're going to move on to that, but how did, did Norwich find out about you? And oh, yeah. Where was the go? build? Where I, the... Yeah, yeah. So I signed a four-year contract at under 12. So I don't think you can do now. I've never heard of it recently. Yeah. At under 12, to yeah, think under 16s yeah. with Luton. Yeah. So I went onto the pitch and had a photo signing under 12s. And then through that season, that's where the interest picked up. And I remember playing and I was and I was playing okay. I, I may have been making one mistake that season, but I was doing okay. I felt with myself, I was doing all right. Anyway, uh, the academy manager turned, turned up to me and he called me in for a meeting. And he says to me, he goes, um, you're not playing very well. He was like, we've got a game on Saturday. Um, you need to start changing your performance. Like, you need to start doing better. You need to start performing better. And I was like, me and my dad looked at each other in that meeting going, where does that come from? Yeah. Like, that doesn't really make any sense. Mm, okay. Um, so, yeah. And then I played about that game on Saturday. And I don't remember doing particularly well. It was an in-house game like against, I, I, I think, some school or something like that. No, no one's serious. And then the academy manager just came up to me, put his arm around me, and he was like, you are absolutely incredible today. Like... You were absolutely amazing. <laughs> like, and I was just thinking, looking at him thinking... Are you sure about that, man? Sure? I, don't, I don't really <laughs> yeah, know what yeah. you've done. And what then, did I, yeah, what did I yeah. do today that I ain't done normally? Yeah, yeah. and then, anyway, the, 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 the next week, um, because they pulled me into another meeting, and they were just like, look, um, Norwich are interested in you. We, they want to sign you. Um, but we want you to stay. We'll play you under 16s. We'll give you an early scholarship. We'll do this. But at the end of the decision, it's in your hands. Like, they want to buy you, blah, blah, blah. Um, and if you want to do it, we're willing to let you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's how it was. And then... Um, a bit straight. Yeah. yeah. Like, they didn't hold back. They could have held that back, but mm -hmm. they kind of... Yeah, and, and, and yeah, they it was... They might needed the money, though, at the time. And, and the way um, we know is at the time. I mean, obviously, Luton was... Yeah, uh, Luton... Sorry. Luton was still in... Conference. Maybe so, just... Or maybe League maybe Two. Maybe just going to League Two. Maybe. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure. But Luton, uh, Norwich were in the Prem. Um, at that time, they were a Prem team. I can't remember if we were Conf Prem or we were League Two. It's one of the two. I think we might have been Conf Prem. Okay. Um, so, so who was when that when that information came through? Now was it a straightforward let's go? Because as you said, your dad was a Luton fan. Yeah. So was it? His, um, you know, yeah, how did he see? How did he see? So, how did your parents see? Um, I'm a mummy's boy. Mm. I'll be honest. Um, I I didn't want to leave home. My mum didn't want me to leave home. My dad didn't want me to leave. No one wanted me to leave home. But when an opportunity comes like that, I think it's very hard to turn down. Especially even at 12 years old, however old I was, 13 years old. It's very it's very difficult to turn an opportunity like that down. Yeah. And it, it's the same as a first team level. You go from conference or lead two to the Premier League, it's very difficult to turn it down. Mm. And I remember talking to my mum about it and she said, oh, go up to the computer and write in, because I had to go we'll say, in boarding school. Okay. And I just remember playing for Luton. I mean, my, the, the, the category system would just come out. And they were explaining on the radio how category ones, if you're this far, you have to go to boarding school. And I remember to going to dad, I can never do that, dad. Go I can never do it. Yeah. And then six months later, or however many. You were there. I was there. I was yeah, that guy. Yeah. But mum was like, yeah, go to look at the boarding school. It's called Wyndham College. 
So I go on the internet, I'm looking at it, I'm like, and I'm going, like, I remember looking and just freezing and just looking at these people in a boarding school thinking, I'm a boy from London, like, I love the social bubble. I don't mm. think I can go to Norfolk and, and do that. I was to say that. Do you know what I mean? And, 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 but I don't know what, I just, in myself, I just said to myself, just, just, let's just try, try this it. out. Yeah. Let's just do it. Because yeah. I wasn't playing football at those ages. I know a lot of boys do now, but when I was that age, I never thought of the first team. Mm. I never thought of 23s or 18s or the next contract. I didn't just think of the next training session, the yeah. next game. Like, I never oh, really Fergal, cared. Fergal's was making me sound like a bad dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. Fergal's making me sound like a bad uh, dad. Like, like I can say, like, my son, especially the um, my 15-year-old, as soon as he got released from QPR, my, me and his whole thing was, we need to get into a first team quickly. We didn't think about where, what level, anything. It was just about getting to a first team quickly. Yeah. So you can get the exposure that you need to be able to get to the level, which will be your level. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Because I do believe that, that players find their level. Eventually, of course. Do you understand yeah. what I mean? Like you actually find your right, level. Yeah, yeah. Like everyone goes, oh man, that's prem, no. and then and then all of a sudden you see him trying to it goes trickles, it trickles, it trickles, yeah. and then he's playing league one, he's playing league one for five seasons, so you always kind of find your level. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Definitely. But no. So how did how, the yeah? yeah. <laughs> go on, go on, no, no, go on, go on, go on. no. So the the as I said, they've given you the information. Your mum and dad are talking about it. Yeah. You kind of went to college, you kind of to check out the check out the pictures. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, some blazers and yeah. them playing squash and <laughs> like, like green in that. So it's green <laughs> in that. Green blazer. You know yeah. So when you, you've now done your research, you've done your homework, the evidence is there. How did I did the the uh, the decision come about? Um, I think I'll be honest. Uh, I made it pretty quickly yeah. within you know a couple of a couple of days, without seeing where I was going to stay really mm -hmm. in my head I'd already accepted I was going to go there okay um, All right. yeah. there was other op opportunities at the time like I had Tottenham mm. to stay in, in the area we okay. had um, Fulham to stay locally yeah. Arsenal so I had those three on my on to me and I was like I don't know man I just felt because I knew Greg who'd gone from Luton to Norwich so he was a big factor I mean going that in doing okay. doing that move okay so was, the academy manager moved yeah so he yeah so during that year because I, I, you could see him a couple of my games before I'd gone to that last year I was at Luton you could see Greg there and he'd already left for Norwich at the time and you were like why is he here why is he here and then you know okay now it makes sense he's yeah. watching me he's watching me play blah blah he's okay. showing the scouts that Jay Marshall was with the London scout at the time but no okay. uh, big up Jay man yeah, yeah trust me Jay, man. still so, doing his thing no so then yeah so I <laughs> left Norwich. so I left um, yeah then we went to see the um, the school the boarding school me yeah. and my family went up to there we had a tour around then we had a tour around the, the Norwich City training ground okay. the complex and I had to go do a session um, with the, the goalie coach at the time the academy goalie coach and my mum and dad were staying in the canteen area and if you've ever been to Norwich you'll know the canteen area Everyone goes in there. Snug. It's yeah. not like it's separate from the academy yeah. or yeah, the yeah. first Snug. team. Yeah. Everyone, everyone goes. Yeah. The staff, the ground staff, mm -hmm. the coaching mm -hmm. staff, the cleaners, everyone eats in the same area. Yeah. So my mum and dad are having a conversation with Greg at the, the, the table. And then Chris Hewitt, the manager at the time, okay. to pulled up a seat, sat next to him, started eating dinner next to them. And then my mum and dad are having a conversation with Chris Hewitt, now the first team manager, who's just talking to him, not about football, just about personal life. Yeah. yeah. So they both grew my mum and uh, Chris both grew up in the same area. Obviously Chris is Irish. So mum had a lot of you know, there's a lot of affiliation there, a lot of connection there. And it was yeah. nothing to do with the football. Yeah. It was just him being that's what Chris is, a genuinely nice person. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And then that sold her because she knew I was I was gonna be in good hands. But when I signed for Norwich, that was the feeling of family. Mm -hmm. Like it was the only club in the county. You've got Ipswich yeah. down in Suffolk, but they're the only club in the county in Norfolk and it was just that family vibe, and 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 yeah, I was sold when I went there. You know, you go from training. I was training at Fulham, and I was training at Barnfield College. So I was training at school, oh, yeah, and now yeah, I'm going Barnfield. through, <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm going yeah. through these gates with a crest, a Norwich crest yeah. on these big gates. You're going through security guards. Yeah, you're yeah. seeing a million pitches, domes, and little astros, and it was just yeah, a whole new world for me. And I, and I knew that that's where I could see my future going. Yeah, and this was. Yeah. 
I was going yeah, into my under 14. Under 14, so I'm trying to think because everything's changed up there now. Yeah. But around about that time, actually about three years ago, that's when they were building houses at the back. And the the gym was like in a little cabin, like with windows. No, the but windows they were all little big. cabins. It was yeah. All little, yeah, all the training rooms. Yeah. 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 But that cabins, was one of the dreams yeah. they sold me. They were like, these are going to be changed by the end of the year. So by the time you're going to sign it, it will be done. It will be done. And then when I left, however many years later, it was exactly it's the same. same. Yeah. 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 Well, I said yeah. I went there about, yeah. a year, about a year or two ago. Yeah. Um, so your journey, your, your 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 bed's now in Norwich. You're laying yeah. your head there now. What's the vibe like? What you... How's Greg what, treating you? Yeah. How are you how's getting into training? How's the coaches treating yeah. you? How's everything for yeah, you? Yeah, no, I, I remember going in there and there was two goalkeepers my age. Okay. So straight away, I knew I was going to be playing up a year. Like they'd already told me that there was two goalkeepers my age group, but I'd be playing up a year, and mm. then for the Premier League tournaments, all the big competitions and yeah, whatever, come I'd come down. Yeah. So yeah, so I I remember going training for like my first session, um, on these like beautiful pitches, like beautiful grass pitches, and just really feeling like good with myself, like mm. really feeling like this. I'm actually I was expecting a really taking me I was expecting it to take me a long time to transition properly well it's like you looked at it and it's like I belong here yeah and I thought the quality of training was like amazing like I had a goalkeeper called Yanni who used to play for Stoke a, a Finland international if I remember if I call correctly and he was a brilliant guy like just okay. such a friendly warm-hearted guy and everyone around the place was really nice. really amazing mm. and um yeah it, it just fit in like a sock you know everything was just perfect we're training well like you know, I was at school at the time, so I was at boarding school doing half days. So I was um, Monday to Thursday, I'd go f- to school in the mornings till lunchtime. Then lunchtime, I'd go to training and I'd come back from training, back to school, do my homework. You have a homework hour, then sleep. And that was Monday to f- Thursday, all right. Friday, all day at school. And that whole system, the way it worked, was just like amazing. Yeah. Like, it, it was just, it, it worked properly. Like, then, of course, there was problems you know my dad was like is he getting enough education yeah, is he, you know, yeah, even, yeah. are you concentrating that properly but for me i was playing football every day mm. i felt like a pro at under 14s <laughs> yeah. do you know what i mean and, yeah. and i loved it and our great friends around there and yeah initially yeah brilliant i yeah. couldn't fault it anyway I like the way you put in initially because it sounds like we're going to be going somewhere with that <laughs> <laughs> you know the initial, initial so then yeah. 14s you're playing 15s so then what about 15s? 15s, you're still playing up with 16s. Yeah, so we had, a, we had a really good team. I can't remember if it was 14s or 15s. My Norwich team, I was playing that back in my own age group. We um, came third in the Premier League tournament, All right. which was for Norwich a, a massive, massive, massive thing. Mm. Remember, we lost to um, Man City in the semi-final. We lost 4-1, I think, I think it was. And I remember this little small kid, this tiny little small kid scoring a header. I remember going after the game. I was like, "How the hell have we let the smallest boy in the pitch score a header?" I know who you're gonna see. And then you know, six I, years, I seven years, however long see. it down the line, it's a mystery. It yeah, this little small kid comes on for Man City. And you put two and two together, and they're Phil Foden scoring ahead of me under 14s, 15s. Is now the yeah. Potage, oh, prod- prodigy. And, yes. Yeah. yeah. Are you 2000? I'm 99. 99. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so amazing. It makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Same. That's, that's what crazy. I said. As soon as he said it, I knew who he was going to see. Yeah. and uh, yeah, Because um, that's when I heard the hype about Phil. Yeah. He was like 14s, 15s. And it was like a guy who had been working in Manchester. He had told me about him. Because obviously I'm from South. Yeah. So how am I going to know about this kid? Mm. But he's telling me, listen, I've seen the best boy I've seen in a long time. But he's about two foot. Yeah. I said, what do you mean? He goes, listen, technically, <laughs> he is crazy. The things that he does on the ball, yeah. crazy. But he's just small. But I'm telling you, he's going to be a world beater. Mm. And as he said, Fergal said, five to six years on, mate. <laughs> Turns out. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's playing for England, doing yeah. all the jobs. <laughs> so you, you lot lost to City in the semi. So you find, then you go into like a third, beat fourth yeah. playoffs. And we played uh, Arsenal. Okay. And uh, we went to a penalty shoot. We drew nil or 1-1. And we won on penalties. I remember saving the the last penalty to to Reese Nelson. Yeah, yeah. To that time, yeah. And obviously these boys have gone to big things. But yeah, that team, our team was really good. Like Decent. we were really talented. Yeah. Group. So we were pushing on. I was going under 15s. I was playing off the year. And then my, I remember under 14s. I made my 16s debut. The under 16s keeper had a got food poisoning. 
so the day before I was at school, they called me like, Fergs, tomorrow you need to travel to Liverpool with the 16s. I was going, what? Like, I'm on the 14s. How am like, mm. I going to play 16s? Especially in goal. Like, it's a massive battle. Like, yeah, just took, it, took it in my stride. Went to Liverpool. They took picked me up. Went straight to Liverpool. Like, what happened like that? Quick of a flash. Played against Liverpool and as another 14, I was playing 16s and I, was, I played well. I made so many saves. Yeah. I, I was confident. I was you know, in my element. And then... I remember at the end of that game, the the Liverpool coach came up to me and he put his arm around me. He kind of pulled me to the side a bit and he goes, what's your name, kid? And I was like, oh, Fergal Hell Brown. He's like, we'll be in contact. And I never, yeah, and I never... Them th- tapping ups there. And I never really, I never really <laughs> thought of it like that. Because at the moment, I just asked him my name. Like, yeah. maybe, I don't know. I don't you know, think about a transfer. You don't think of anything. And then now I'm mean, kind of, now I'm a coach. Now I do other things. You look back on it and go, Oh, what was he trying there? Yeah. But then, I'd, obviously, if they did put a bid in for me, if they tried, did try and do anything, I, I would have never going to know. Yeah. If Norwich yes. just stopped it straight, I was never going to know if, if I could ever be a they Liverpool probably, player. Yeah, that's the point. Did. Of course. Probably did. And, yeah, they probably, goes. and they probably put them off because I literally just signed, signed yeah, so for Norwich. Yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. the end of my first year being at Norwich. Mm-hmm. So, whatever, yeah. But that that happened. Whether it was just asking my name to, to, to follow me on facebook or whatever i don't know but <laughs> yeah i don't know um but uh yeah so under 14 everything started really well and then i got um my full 15 i always get these meddled up i got my first international call up when i was maybe 14s or 15s for, um, for wales okay so this was in the i think it must be 15s so yeah. this was for the under 16s because i was 99 so i was a young i was old Mm-hmm. Um, my age group because I was born in October, so I was, oh, that, oh, I was that side. Oh, right, right, okay. Of, uh, yeah. So, um, so you're the younger age, but the older group. Yeah, it's mad. So at school, I'd be the older one, but at international level, I'd be young, the oh, yeah, youngest yeah, one. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So um, I got called up. So it must be on the fifteens for to play Victory Shields, which is obviously they don't do it anymore. Yeah, yeah. Thing on Sky Sports. Oh, I, love, I, love no, I used to love that. England, 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 Ireland, Ireland, Northern Ireland, Wales, Wales, Wales Scotland. Scotland. I used to love watching that. Yeah. So yeah. So I was I was called up for that, and I was like, yeah. Let's do it. Like, yeah. I don't even know about international. I didn't even think I could play international. I didn't, this was how naive I was. Yeah. I didn't know about any of this. Well, that's the innocence yeah. of it, though. Yeah. But yeah. like, that's the beauty it's the, of yeah, it. Yeah, it's the beauty. But now, innocence. you know, so you, you know, under, I don't know, under 12s, boys, you know about getting international. Court. I didn't yeah. know you could do that at that age. <laughs> and, and now, like, it's people are thinking about under 13s. Can yeah. I keep playing for 15s, England? Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and for me, it just happened. It just happened. And I wasn't expecting it. I didn't know about it. I didn't know any scouts. But yeah, um, I got called up and, um, and I got dragged into a meeting with. Um, the Norwich Academy manager at the time who was Ricky Martin and he was like uh, oh, West Ham no, West Ham, West Ham, now. West yeah. Ham and he was like look Fergs don't play like don't go like hold out for England hold out for England you'll get the England call so hold on pause 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 <laughs> where's Greg so Greg was like head of recruitment at the time All right. so I think Ricky was like head of academy Greg was head of recruitment at that at that, at that moment okay yeah. alright cool, he's, cool. Limiting, cool. he's limiting his involvement yeah, yeah. basically or his, or his involvement's limited yeah yeah kind of whichever yeah. way whichever way you want to put it but then Ricky's told you nah listen hold up yeah he was like look, hold up for England like you'll get England like you're good enough to get England so I was like I'm not going to say no to my academy manager you're not going to do that yeah yeah so I was like okay Funnily enough, that Wales team went on to win that victory shield. The team of Ethan Ampadu. Oh my God. Ben Woodburn. That's the one that beat my son. Is that the Tyler, Tyler, Rob, Tyler, Roberts. Tyler Roberts? Yeah, that's that, the one yeah. that beat Rash. Yeah. yeah. That's the one. Yeah. In a cold day, raining, pelting in Wales, pelting. They <laughs> beat them 1-0. Drove, drove up there six hours. <laughs> six hours. Rain was coming down. <laughs> and they lost 1-0. But it was like, I and think was it was like it. the first time Wales won it. In years, maybe ever or what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. England were just yeah. rampant with it. They oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah. it was Different. a massive yes. thing in, in Wales. I don't know why they stopped it, but yeah, yeah. no, but yeah. politics of England, didn't it? Yeah, of course, but because then England said they didn't really want it and they weren't they weren't really interested yeah. and they'll do other things and mm. the boys can play against other internationals, and South American, more European, and not keep. That's it not else. televised, and. In- it, yeah, so, goes. Yeah. yeah, so then <laughs> I, t- I said no to that and then I was still playing up here so I was 15s playing 16s like week in, week out yeah, yeah. Like, making saves doing what I did again just enjoying football still at that age I didn't mm. really have uh, no an understanding of... of what the pathway was I was just playing Yeah, and they say stuff like remember when I first signed they were like oh, you'll get an early scholar you'll get a scholar within the next year or so but for me like it was just a throwaway come I didn't really think of it I didn't really understand it 
yeah. you know, I didn't really understand what, what those kind of contracts were. So I was just doing really bad and highly bad, carried on playing. And then and towards the end of my under 15s year, uh, we played Red in a way. And then um, my coach came up to me and was like, look, you've been called up for Republic of Ireland. And this is the Republic of Ireland team was like Declan, Declan Rice, Marcus McGuane, that, that age group. Yeah. So, yeah. I was, yeah, yeah. so now I got called up for Republic of Ireland. And then Ricky was like, obviously he spoke to Ricky and Ricky was like, yeah, do this. Like they have a good setup there and like, a good pathway, like go. So I've, yeah, there was about a year in between each other or six months. So what, England weren't coming? No, I, I don't know if that was what he thought. Okay, yeah. now nah, just in case England don't come, do do, do the Republic the Republic of Ireland yeah. one. Right. Yeah. So I went to a camp um, in Reading. We were playing Reading because it was friendly against Reading, and it was raining. It was cold. It was it was a three day camp, and I remember going to the game. And I remember just travelling there, and I was thinking to myself, I don't really want to be here, <laughs> and I didn't know really know what it was. Wow, like. I didn't know if it was the players. Mm. They didn't really warm to them. It was like they were good boys. And I remember like we went they put us like a, we watched a, a video reel, a highlights reel of, of all the boys and, and the talents they'd done and everyone was had a little wrong chunk in this highlight reel they put on before the game. And I don't know, I just didn't feel that passionate about it. Yeah, yeah. And I don't I don't know why. But then I remember going to the game and I did the warm up and something switched to me and said, I don't I don't want to play. Mm. I don't know if it was no, I did it what it was. But when I said to the goalie coach that I've 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 pulled my thigh, like I've got a thigh strain, like I don't think I'll I can play, like I didn't. I just didn't want feeling. to do it. I just yeah. didn't and that's probably a, an awful and that is kit on everything. I was I was there, everybody had a you had the warm up kit, I had a badge on me, the number one shirt I was told I was gonna play. This is a head I don't know if you know a guy called Mark Mark Travers. He plays for Bournemouth for keeper. He made his first team debut a couple of years ago. Yes, yes. yes oh, he's, Travis, yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll, Travis. yeah, yeah, He's played like yeah, EFL Cup. Yeah, like yeah. He's now, he's made, like, not made it, but he's made his first team debut yeah, yeah. in the Prem or whatever. But he was my number two. And I just said, no. I, well, number two at Ireland? Yeah, he was my oh, okay. number two at Ireland. We room shared together for those couple of days. But again, maybe that played, but we didn't talk in that room. I remember being in that room, not talking. Hmm. I just didn't feel the vibe of that team. And yeah. I was like, I don't, I'm not going to play well. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not no, gonna yeah, play yeah. here. I don't. So I, I said to him that uh, even the manager, I didn't really get on. It was a thumb, someone, something O'Connor, his name was. I just didn't get along with him, and not not in a bad mouth way. I just, no, his approach to coaching wasn't. Was it how you so felt, I felt it? Yeah. okay with? But anyway, I said I got a five stay, and he was like, okay, that's fine. Like, so I've watched the game now, blah blah blah. And he's come out to the car park to see my dad after, and he was look, your son's brilliant in goal. The next time, don't. He was like, next time, don't bring him if he's got a little injury. He, he sounded a bit annoyed that I didn't mm. play. And, and I thought, okay, oh, this is the chance over. This is the chance done. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not feeling that bad about it, but yeah, How did your dad now. feel? We, yeah, because from my house to Reading, it was like two and a half hours. We had oh, the whole yeah, journey yeah, back. Exactly. And oh, we were just wow. chatting. And he was like, if you're not feeling it, you're not feeling it. And, yeah. and I'm not going to make you do anything you don't want to do. Yeah. And that's my, like, I had a brilliant, pe my parents yeah. are fantastic. Respect the way that. it is. Yeah. And he put no pressure on my football. And he was like, that's your decision, that's your decision. As long as you're okay with that decision, then I have, have no problem with it. So I, yeah, so we went home. And then a month later, we pulled into a meeting with Ricky again. And he just slams down his massive folder. And it was an itinerary of the under-17 European Championships. A massive <laughs> Republic of Ireland badge on the front. And I was like, what? He was like, you've been picked. For Ireland, for Ireland, a month after that, and I was like, oh my god, like, I was not. And that's for the European Championships. Yeah, and I was like, I was not expecting this at all. <laughs> wow. But then I've had to go. So what happened then was I didn't have an Irish passport, and because it's outside the Great Britain, the UK, I had to get an Irish passport. So my dad was running off every day to the Irish Embassy, knocking on the doors, going, "I need this passport for a month's time. I need it now." It didn't come for that month. Got taken out of it. You know, they brought a the standby keeper in. I got then caught up again a couple of months later for the next couple of games, the next few friendly games. For Ireland again? Again. I still didn't have the passport. What? Yeah, the passport took about six, seven, eight months to come. Then after that second oh, wow. time, I was like, it's done. 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 Yeah. And then it was, after that, it was, it was kind of done. It was done. Like, did, they, did you explain to them that, look, they can't give me a passport? Is I said, yeah, they, they were, on their end, they were trying, to, they, they all went to the embassy and they were like, we need this boy to get his passport. It just didn't happen. And yeah. maybe that was, was fate. Fair. 
Yeah, like I, I, it wasn't meant to be. Like yeah. it just wasn't meant to be. Um, so yeah, that that passed. I was still playing at Norwich, still loving it. And then my under sixteens year came. Now my mm. under sixteen year was a real big character building year for me because we were going into obviously I'd already got my scholar at this point. So they gave it to you, yeah. <clears throat> but that story in itself is tough because I remember going to my scholar meeting. I've been start right at the start of my sixteens year, and I went there. Half, like three quarters of me know, and I'm probably going to get it. Yeah, yeah. Because I've been playing for, you know, I've called up for Republic Fire, called up for Wales. Like, I'm not, playing up. Yeah. yeah. Doing went to this meeting and they had this a pen, blank piece of paper, pencils, Greg and Darren Huckabee. Greg was what he brought me to do, and Darren Huckabee was probably my favourite coach at Norwich at the time. Darren, legend. Yeah, and of they were course. like, they wrote yeah. down five foot ten, five foot eleven, which was my height, but six foot, six foot two plus. And I was like, what are these numbers about? They were like, this is your heart now. If you're this height, it's going to be very hard for you to have a career in the game. If you go to six foot, you'll be a Premier League Championship goalkeeper. If you go to six foot two plus, you'll play for England. And I, and I just thought to myself, I just, wow. I didn't say anything at the time. I didn't say anything at the time. I signed the contract because I didn't want to be anywhere else. I didn't have an agent at the time. I signed the contract and I just saw, I, I, I just, look, and then I remember running down the stairs because he had to run down the stairs. I ran down the stairs, passed, and I just sat, I took my dad's keys, opened the car, I just sat in the car and just cried. And I was like, if I don't grow to these heights, there is nothing I can do. Basically, yeah, they, they, they're putting pressure on you to do something about something you've got yeah. no control. Yeah. 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 Basically. That's basically it. Basically. Like, you're really going to Go to the gods or go and drink some sort of magnum juice to say, Wicked right, juice. This is going to make me six, six foot two. Yeah. Right. Wicked juice. I'm going to get three, four inches. Yeah, on. I'm going to get three. Like, that. What is that? But it's not like really they say, Oh, you know what? You're not technically sharp. We're going to give you X amount or, you know, your, um, your, your handling's not great. So we're going to, that's fine because there's stuff you can work on. No, but on. that's technique. Yeah. But how do you work? But how do you change how do you your physicality? Your yeah. How do you work on it? And I, and I guess that was did the... Did you stretch? Did you, did you do the stretch what method? Was you in your bed like this? <laughs> yeah. Like holding on to the bar. You know when, you, you know when, you know when you're young, you, you got to hold on to it. And just, if you drop, you get beaten up. Stay. <laughs> basically, you're just doing it to you. Just, oh yeah, okay, stretching. I'm just, just, stay. Yeah. stay. It's stretching. I'm, stay. I'm getting 5'10". Now look, 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 look. I'm longer, I'm longer. It's the arms, son. It's yeah, the arms. That added, like... Yeah, no, it was... It was, yeah. It was hard for me. Because... I went from a situation where I had to change my game because under under thirteen I was tall, like, I was massive. I, yeah. I was I was five foot ten and a half. So you're the early from, growth spurt. From really young, like right. eight, nine, ten, eight, nine, ten, I was massive. Mm. But then I started plateauing and I didn't grow anymore. So I had to change my game from being a tall goalkeeper who could just make saves because the shots are weak and I can just do this. And so then I had to really focus on my feet. So that I was just bam, 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 my sharp feet. My feet just became. So quick. I remember doing a training session under 15, 16 with John Muddy. I was first team. And we done, yeah, I was 16 training. Uh, oh, John Muddy, the first team first team. Yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah, would do a session yeah. with the first team like once, sometimes once a month, maybe. And he just pulled me to the side and he was like, Phil, well, your feet are the quickest feet I've ever seen. And this is an experienced pro now saying this. And I was like, if my feet are quick, if my distribution's good, if I'm sh saving shots, if I'm commanding my area in reason, then what's the problem? But, you know, th this was their decision. Yeah. You know, they wanted a tall keeper. Yeah. I ain't going to go. Yeah. That's their decision. Then, yeah. Wasn't you there with that eight foot keeper? Yeah, Aston. Yeah. Oxborough, yeah. He was yeah. a good mate of mine. And we were like head and toe, like Nick and Tark. We were like really pushing each other. I know I was two years below him. Yeah, yeah. But he saw me, not as a threat because we were good mates, but, a little he bit of competition. Good, he, knew, yeah. he knew there's levels set. He knew to, there was something. With he knew there's something about you. Yeah. So if you were his height, yeah. it would have been, been an issue. Yeah. yeah, and I think it was, yeah, because we were really, like, we were really close. We got to eat together. We, like, through my scholarship, we'd go, we were really, really good mates. But yeah. we knew if we were training together, it was going to be a top session. 
Like if it was me and him, it was going to be because every sometimes you look at a keeper and you're like, why are you here? This is just going to ruin a session. And that's what it is, especially yeah. as a keeper because you've, you've got there's an 11 of us, there's only three, four of us. Yeah. Like if he's here, he's going to have rubbish service, he's going to drop everything, the coach is going to talk to him for half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> With us, we knew what we were doing. It was a fine tweak we needed. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. was tall, we need to get down quicker, maybe. You need to do that. I, need, I was smaller, so I need to really work on my feet, really work on my spring, really work on this. Yeah. That's how it was. And yeah, so they told me that I got my scholar bring in my 16s and throughout my 16s yeah, I don't know how many games I played I, 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 it wasn't many not as much as I had been experienced because I was playing for four, 15s and 16s mm-hmm. or 14s 15s and 16s and under 14s yeah. now I was just purely playing 16s and I didn't play many games because they were just bringing in trialist after trialist after trialist because I was the only keeper and yeah. they needed two keepers for the under 18s yeah yeah but I'm not saying they were bringing someone from London or they were bringing someone from Norfolk or they were bringing someone from Birmingham. They were bringing people from Slovenia, Slovakia, France. So they were Holland. Holland. international. They were, they were really, they were really yeah. needing that. And then it got to like, we had about, I'm, I'm, this is no example, we had about 15 to 20 goalkeeper trials that year at my age. A new one every two weeks or but so. How does that give you as a keeper confidence yeah. in going into your scholar? Yeah, and I you don't know what, and I have a game which is just represents it. We lost 7-0 um, to Chelsea. Uh, and I played in goals. This is an under-18s game. And we oh. lost 7 I was under-15s. And my goalkeeper coach was, look, folks, you need the games. Go play under-18s. But I'm playing Chelsea away, a team we've never like, won every home game for the past however many years. <laughs> they don't lose at home. If you know Chelsea, they don't lose. No matter what team they play, they don't lose at home. And we got smacked 7-0. And I remember going out of the game like, oh, Without really playing, like I hardly played this season. They chucked me there, and I was like, "Well, like, am I, have I lost it? What's mm. going on here?" Um, but when they were saying, when they were bringing in all them trialists, was there any point you thought? Do you ever feel like threat, or do you just think, "Okay, they just bring in another keeper. Let's see who's going to be my back, the backup." I did believe in myself. Yeah, I did. I, I did. <clears throat> wow. I think I I always initially when you look at keeper, you go. You see a six foot four outstanding boy you're standing next to you and you're like, oh, yeah, them Scandinavians do come with size. <laughs> yeah, I was like, like here we go, with, here yeah. we go. And then, but then I'd see them catch a ball when they're dropping it. And that just motivated me to go, nah, forget that. Yeah. I don't care how tall you are. <laughs> yeah. Watch me catch these 20 follies. Yeah. I don't care how hard they come. I'll catch every single one. No problem. And that was my motivation. It did give me motivation. Yeah. As much as it, when you do initially see so you go, oh, in your shell and you're like, oh. But then when you see them train, you're like, no, I'm going to prove to you. I, I am. can do this. That was. And yeah. Um, but I remember we played, and then we played Reading at home. And then the under-18 goalkeeper at the time, who wasn't playing a sub-keeper, played the first half against Reading on the 16s because he needed game time. So I had to do then, I had this, all these trialists, and this under-18 keeper who's not playing had to play f- the first half of my game against Reading. And I played the second half. And I remember coming off that pitch. And again, I was like, Phew. walk past Darren Huck, we went with the high five. And I was just like, yeah, one of those ones. You know, and he knew something was wrong. And <laughs> yeah. I was like... I was low on confidence. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. like that sixteens year was just he put his arm around me, he's like, Ferg, you're a top keeper. Like they they want you here, but it's just your decision. Like again, it's yours, it's all in your hands. And I respect him for for, for saying that. Yeah, but as much as they're saying it's in your hands, it's, it's in your hands with But it's not. It's yeah, not. with no, no no, I was gonna say there's, it's in your hands, but there's a few restrictions. No, there's not even, it's not in his hands. Do you know what I'm saying? But it's not in his Yeah, it's not. It's in, what, it's in his hands to sign. Hands? Cool. But it's not in your hands because... Huh? That's what exactly what's It's just to hand. sign. Just to sign a piece of paper. That's all, yeah. that's yours. But your destiny... Destiny is not in your hands. Isn't in your hand. And I feel that's Sleeping, what man. actually pees me off with a lot of these clubs because they take that away mm. from you as the player. Your destiny. Do you understand? And... They did that with you by just saying to you, hi, 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 if you don't get to this, if you don't get to this, blah, 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 blah. So they took away that thought pattern from you mm. where your thought pattern was my destiny is to be a first team keeper. Yeah. If it's with Norwich, hip, hip, hooray, but I know I can be a first team keeper mm. somewhere. Yeah, but as soon as they started to do that, there was a, a tad bit of doubt because now you're thinking about yourself Self, in yeah, this sense of height, yeah? yeah? The keepers, like you said, they didn't bother you because you knew technically you were above them, but you didn't have what most of them had, height. But again, that's where kind of technically like, them saying that, that that's where kind of like child welfare comes into it. No, but because you've put no, unnecessary no, stress no, on the no, kid. No, for no, them, pause, for him, pause again. In what 
era or era are we saying that from? Because if we talk about certain eras of football... Now. Okay, yeah, obviously. If we talk yeah, about but this is, not, eras, this is not long no, ago, though. No, I know. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying if we're talking about certain eras of football... Yeah. That's like... Of course not, but I'm saying now because it's not that far you get away. What, I mean? what four, five years ago? Now I'm 21 now, and I feel like I was 15 and six years ago. Yeah, so six, six years, years ago. ago. Yeah, so it's not years, really yeah. that far. It's not that long ago. Yeah, but do you think things have moved on that far? I think it probably sense, st- so, started around then. No, but in the sense of the welfare of players, players and those kind of things. Listen, we're having an argument about older players having dementia. Yeah. That argument is real. Mm-hmm. It's not a fake argument. Mm-hmm. If you look at the balls that they were using back then, it is nothing like these. Yeah. Yeah, these are flyaways. <laughs> Kick it. <laughs> Kick them balls, you might break your foot. Yeah. You understand? They had steel cap boots and all those things and they're heading them balls as well. Yeah. But if we're going to have an argument, we can't even have an argument about dementia. <laughs> are you really telling me about a welfare of a kid mm. and they're going to have that? Come on, man. They don't look at... For me, as soon as you sign a contract with any club, it mm. doesn't matter where you are, wherever, you're a product. Yeah. You're no longer Fergal. You're Fergal the product. Yeah, so we're now looking to create the product. Mm. If that product we are trying to create doesn't match up to what we want, on to the next one. Mm. That's the business mm-hmm. of football. Of course. Do you understand I what that. I'm trying to say? So I when I say it like that, I'm not saying it like, they shouldn't have welfare because for me, 150%, they should. Because I always say football is 90% mental and 10% football. Because yeah, if you're that. mentally yeah. strong in this mm-hmm. and you can mentally get through certain things, the football thing goes like that. Yeah. But that's the triggers. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people that don't care about those mental things, mate. Of course. I yeah, I understand Junior, that. I understand. you're rubbish, mate. I understand, I understand yeah, that. get better, son. <laughs> yeah, I don't like how you do this. Yeah, yeah. And there'll be the man that's standing right there mm-hmm. and he won't go, oh, I'll stop that. Leave that out. Mm-hmm. He's all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe now there might be a few coaches, but then there might be a few coaches that are scared of their jobs and they won't say a word. Yeah. So it's that kind of level that we need to get it's the with. middle ground. Yeah, 100%. Because yeah. for mm-hmm. me, if as a dad, Going into that situation with Fergal, I would have probably said, F your contract, I'm going. That's what I'm saying. And no but, disrespect to your old man, because every step of the way with your dad, I've rated him. And but I I've still seen... do. But it's the sense of, I know about that pot. I've, I've seen, seen that I've pot. seen it many times. And if you haven't gone through it, like your dad didn't go through it, and it was a learning curve with both of you. But because I've already gone through something and I've seen it with myself, mm. there's no way you're going to do it again. Yeah. And there's no way you're going to, be able to take the piss again. Do you understand and, what and, I mean? And, and someone listening now that's the reality. would be in this situation now. No, 100%. And, and it might not even be it. Like I said, I've seen outfield players. Oh, um, you know, if you don't hit so-and-so, we might have to push you 100%. to another position. So if you're a winger, we have to push you right. Well, hold on a second. Are you, not, are you not acknowledging his technical ability? Are you not assessing what's actually making him what he is now? But because, I don't know if it's a British thing or whatever it is, but because he's not of a certain height, you know, height height requires a certain position, which I find it just totally stupid. Do you get what I'm saying? Come on. And then that, there's a question I want to get onto with current keeper stay, but I'll I'll get on I'll get onto that later. But so obviously that game's happened at you, uh, the Chelsea game. Yeah, and you and you scored you strolled off. And the, yeah, that was the Reading game. The Reading Red game. Sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah, um, yeah, he's got half. Sorry. He's got half of a yeah, half. The half yeah. yeah. And then no, and then a month later I got called into a meeting with my my. Uh, my 16th manager was Graham Murray, and um, he he spoke to me and he was like, I've got something to show you. He turned around, and again, all these big folders came up, bang, and it was the England logo. And I was like, what? And it was like, England, under 16th camp, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I've hardly played this year. Like, how am I getting... Pulled up, called up for this. Yeah, the asking, recognition. You're man. asking no, questions, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah. And he was like, "You deserve this." And he was like, "I know you might not have played as much as you want this year, but you deserve this." And I was like, "Oh, wow." Well. Um, so yeah, that, that. So I got to England, and then yeah, doing that meeting, he he turned, he goes to me, he goes, and Greg was there at the time, and he was like, "Ferg, like, we've brought in these keepers because we need to for next year. Mm. We need to for next year. If you look at the production line, Aston will go twenty threes." And that means we only have you. We can't have. Chelsea. They were like we had it in the when they won the youth cup. They brought in Will Britt on loan from a youth loan from Southampton, 
And they're like, we've had that before. We've our keepers got injured. We had to do emergency youth loan. We don't want to be in that situation again. Yeah. Like we need to do it. So they're like, but the, the fact is we can't find anyone. We've looked in England. There's no one better than you. We've looked in Europe. We're struggling to find anyone who's of your level. You. Yeah. Like, there's no point getting someone who's like, like below you. We need someone who's going to compete with you to push you. Yeah. Like there's no point fair on them. It's not fair on you. It's like we need competition for you. We need it to be tough for you. We need because that's what's going to get the best out of you. Then I understood it. That were that we had that meeting just before a game. I can't remember who we played. But just music, before a game. But, sorry to cut you, folks. But you got told. So with the explanation that you were told, you could gauge it for yeah. yourself. Self, yeah. Not what you were doing prior to that meeting was assuming. Yeah. Do you understand what yeah, I'm coming yeah, yeah, from? Yeah, no, agreed. And that's where I think a lot of these coaches get it wrong. Yeah. Because they'll bring in a thousand players, knowing that they're going to offer you a scholar, but not actually clarifying what they're doing. Mm. So you as that player, they don't care. So mentally, you're going through haywire because, am I good enough? Have I done enough? Yeah. Have I done this? Have I done that? So you're now, when you're I go out there, have yeah. I played? Did I do this? Did I make the right mistake? Did I make the right choices? Did I make the mistakes? Mm. Did, 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 your brain's going everywhere. Mm. Where, mm. as you said, when you had the conversation now, everything kind of settled a bit yeah. because now you could understand. All right. Mm. All right. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. You did this. Oh. All right, cool. Let's do this. But I, I could understand that. Like, then I look back on it and they tell you that. I could look back on it and go, yeah, he wasn't as good as me. He wasn't as good as me. He wasn't as good as me. That's why they're bringing it on in. Yes, they're looking, but they're looking to maybe help me develop, which I, that's the way I took it. I was like, they're, they're trying to help me develop yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't feel any animosity. At that point, I was like, okay, this is what it is. I can't, this is a challenge. You yeah. know, this is how I'm going to become. It's not going to be. Yeah. You're naive to think it's going to be a plain ride it's all the way through to the first. Of course, you're going to have stumbling blocks. You're going to have so many stumbling blocks. And, and yeah, I had to learn that. But then the England thing just gave you that whole burst. Because obviously from under 14s, I've been telling that you're going to yeah, get a team told, to contact. Yeah, you're going to get And it finally came. Yeah. And I remember the more, the, that night before I was going to go to St. George's Park and I just didn't sleep for one moment. Who was just tossing and turning, hmm. just thinking, oh my God, I'm so nervous. But... <laughs> So like, proud of myself, you know, oh, and big up the kid AG. Yes, hundred percent. Me and Dad left. I think we left at like six o'clock in the morning. Drove up to St George's Park. He was in his suit and tie. Go straight to work after. But um, he came. <laughs> nah, <and> I'm, <laughs> I'm in the track suit. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a trap star and all sorts. <laughs> <laughs> that goes. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, so, so yeah, we went to St George's Park, and I said we on the arrival. I said to my dad like. You can watch for a bit if you want. Like, it's no yeah. problem. You can watch you, for a bit. You, they, they, you ain't getting that COVID. Yeah. Yeah. So now we were. I was. Yeah. So he watched it for a bit. It was really good. And I trained. We trained. I think we were there for three, four days. It was a ninety-nine squad. So Phil Ford and Reese Nelson. Those those kind of people. And I, I, I loved it. Like the quality of it was brilliant. And I, I've. I just love training. Did Reese remember you from that penalty save? Do you know what Reese? Funny is the thing with the story of Reese. He had a video. He used to have a video on his Instagram of when he. Packed me and disgusted me from a free kick. He wrapped it top bins, and you just see me going and I'm trying to dive and just stop it in the middle, just watching it go into the top bin. <laughs> so we've always had that, me yeah. and Reese. There's kind of that, that back when I remember we played, um, we used to play Chelsea under 15s. And you know, I don't know if you've ever been to the changing of Chelsea at Cobham, the massive long corridor, corridor. with the yeah. change room on the side. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was walking into yeah. my change room. That leads to the reception. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I saw one of the Chelsea boys, and he opened the door, he looked at me, he looked at each other, and he opened the door, and he goes, Oh boys, that keeper's playing again, and like proper like, depressed way, and I was like, "What? It's about me!" Like, <laughs> so I think I've always, I've always had that respect of him, though. Oh, that, okay. those, so, I, so I could go into England, and everyone was like, "Oh yeah, he plays for Norwich, but yeah. he's actually he's actually he's all right, he's actually actually all right. like yeah. he's actually decent." Because you like, know that as well. You get that stigma when <laughs> yeah. you play for certain clubs, yeah, and clubs, you yeah, go yeah. into England. Like. I've always thought that because even like the latest ones, when you got the, all the boys going in, and then you got a kid from the like, AFC Wimbledon, yeah, or Southend, I'm thinking, well, "How's he gonna fit How's in there? That's gonna be a man, but." I no, guess it's all different. That. They were good. The boys there were good, top lads, and you know, I was there for three days. I didn't, I didn't make the squads. I got, I was standby. I think I was on standby twice. Who was the other keepers there? Uh, it was a guy called Nick Hayes, who's at Ipswich now. He was at Ipswich. Yeah, now tall. He's at, he was yeah, tall, isn't he? He's at Salford Square. City now. Yeah. Okay. I can't remember who the other one was. All right. Off the top of my head, I want to say Jamie Cummings. Chelsea. Was at Chelsea now at yeah. Stevenage. Okay. Maybe him. Could be potentially. Um, but yeah, no, I was there for three days, and you know, I, I, I it gave me a lot of confidence going of course, back to Norwich course, as well, course, course. going for England. But um, yeah, 
So yeah, that, that, that was my whole under 16s, yeah. So in the nutshells, in a, in a nutshell, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so sixteens is we're walking into first year. Yeah, we're walking. Okay, so I guess you've signed now. Yeah, yeah, you signed. Did. yeah I signed, signed straight away. Okay, yeah, okay, I signed straight away. But we're going into so our now. First now year we're now. starting our first year scholar yeah. at Norwich. So the first year, um, we went. I remember straight away. We went. We went that one tour to Prague, Czech Republic, and um, they brought the twenty threes keeper on tour with us, and I remember him starting. The two, we had three, it was a three game tour, mm. and he started the first two games. And I'm the 18s manager was Graham Murray at the time. I remember going to, to or Mertz came up to me, he was like, Why are you, why are you annoyed? I was like, Mertz, like, I want to be playing. I know he's 23s. And his name was Jake Hallett, and he was a top guy, one of our good mates today. But I was like, I want to be playing. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't come to Czech Republic just to sit just on the sit bench. Down and watch, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he was like, I get that, but. His competition, like he's twenty, he's a twenty three keeper. He's priority at the moment. I've got to play him. Do you mm. know what I mean? Like, so it wasn't that he was better than you. Just that, no. whether he thought whether he, Jake was okay. better than me right. yeah, as well. Do you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? It, it's yeah. just what he's being told. Yeah. A lot of these coaches and the academy do this. Yes, of course. But someone from the hierarchy, like the twenty three, he's got to play in that position. Mm. Mm. He needs minutes. He needs to play. I played the third game, played Wolves, and like Gibbs White played and all that. We won like three one or whatever. But that was my first another experience where I was like. Another thing I've got to get over, another thing I've got a character building. Yeah, yeah. And that was right from the off of my scholarship. 